OK, uh, powering on, two more presentations to go. Um, we all know about speaking on social media. We all know about talking on social media and sending our message out. But what about listening on social media? How good are we at that? Well, someone to share with us how it can be done and what rewards it can bring is the head of social media listening at the BBC, Jenny Woods, and Will McInnes, CMO of Brandwatch in the UK. So please welcome our next two speakers. Thank you. Hello. Good afternoon, Berlin. Uh, it's been fantastic being here. I always enjoy a publishing and media conference because the business is interesting, it's so dynamic, it's changing so fast, but also the content is so interesting. We've got a fantastic presentation today that's almost entirely <laughs> from Jenny. This is, uh, I wasn't going to introduce you. You, you can go for this it. This is Jenny from the BBC. <laughs> Quick round of applause for Jenny. <laughs> So um, we will not be talking about uh, voice-activated assistants or robot cars. We're actually talking about something very real that this global publisher, this global media organization, is using to inform their business. So that's why this case study is so interesting. So uh, to set the scene, there has never been more data available to us. So I'm a marketer, you guys are business people, you come from journalist backgrounds, publishing backgrounds. We are, protect, we are overwhelmed with the availability of data. So whether it's Reddit, whether it's Instagram, whether it's Twitter, so 6,000 tweets per second, uh, more when Trump is online, Facebook likes per second, 52,000. There's this huge deluge of information but as publishers and media organizations, there is also a fantastic learning opportunity. This is the world's largest searchable archive of human thought. And it's real time, and it's unprompted, and it's fresh. So what we want to do today, and Jenny does a fantastic job of this, is describe the opportunity to listen to this constant conversation and drive it into your editorial work. And with that, I hand over to Jenny. Thank you. So, uh, yeah, so social listening is ultimately listening to the conversation happening outside of your platforms, because sometimes we get so siloed into listening to what's happening on our platforms. And social listening allows us to track overall brand health, generate ideas for marketing campaigns, create content that our audience actually craves, because we're listening to what they crave. Um, improve or enhance our audience experience, identify influencers and advocates, and uh, drive strategic product decisions. So almost all of these I'm going to be tapping into uh, with over uh, the next 20 minutes in this case study. Oh, and crisis management as well. Um, so I'm going to look at case study on The Missing and Line of Duty. These were two shows um, on BBC One about a year ago, and they're both whodunit type dramas. Um, and in fact, The Missing was based in Germany, so I don't know if anyone saw these shows. Um, and our aims for these shows was to reach a youth audience, something the BBC can sometimes really struggle with, and achieve broadcast viewing. So what make, ensuring that um, our audiences are watching week by week. So young audiences obviously binge watch on Netflix and other on-demand services, and so trying to get them to stay uh, engaged enough to watch a show every week is quite a challenge. So our objectives that we set out to help us achieve these aims was to generate deep engagement on social media. So deep engagement being a comment or a share. So something where someone would really have to have read and understood what, was happen what, what the post was to then be able to put their name or be comfortable enough to put their name alongside that post. And harness influencers. So influences for a younger generation are as close to them as friends and family. They are not like celebrity, they are real people who live in their towns and they really relate to them. And we trust, 96%, we have more trust in uh, recommendations from friends and family, 96% more trust in that, than we do over any other form of advertising. And influences are that friends and family. So the core principles for deep engagement was communication, not broadcast. And as a broadcaster, that is sometimes a challenge. Um, authenticity, so being authentic to the platforms that we're on, being authentic to the audience we're trying to reach, but then also maintaining authenticity to our brand, the BBC, and our tone of voice. 
and timeliness. So we know that social media, most of it's just half of it's live. So you can't wait a week to put your content out. You've got to be fast paced and move with it. So a little bit of background. So broadcast content is uh, the content that we were posting in the past, which essentially is something where we say, OK, my gut and past experience tells me that this post is going to do really well. So we push that out on social media. And we don't review it again until the end of a show and at the wrap up stage. And you analyze it. And you take the learnings forward to the next show. Or you don't. Whereas reactive content is content that comes out of this process I'm going to be talking about, which is social media listening. So it's, it's a new way of working. It's being reactive. It's being responsive. And we needed to put a strategy in place to make sure that we were doing that second half. So we put a reactive strategy together, um, which ultimately allowed us to be responsive. So we saved some of our resources and put it to one side so that we could have weekly content that was made off the back of social listening. But we wanted some sort of framework so it wasn't uh, completely terrifying. So we built it around the idea of investigate alongside us. So this would encourage our audience to investigate the Who Done It show alongside us. And by doing that, they would remain engaged in the show, was the idea they would remain engaged in the show week by week. And it would also give us a lot of data to be listening to and using in our social listening strategy. Uh, the other thing as well on that is we also had uh, frameworks put together um, to help speed up the creative pr process. So we actually had t templates ready to go, which would help us push this content out quickly. So we put together a process to allow us to do this responsive strategy. And the first part of this process is to identify topics and sentiment within audience conversation. And we use Brandwatch to do that, which is what, where Will is coming from. And that allowed us to pull, literally pull a deck, and we'd have five or six different topics on there showing examples of what people were talking about. Some of these topics you could probably have predicted in advance. Other ones were completely random, and we didn't know it was going to go so crazy. And um, we'll look at some of those in a minute. So we would bring those topics into a meeting with lots of different people. So in this process, we would have BBC Creative, who is essentially like a creative agency, but in-house. We'd have the marketing team, the social media team, uh, me from audiences. Um, but we would also have the writer and the director of the show on the call. And that was really important to make this a really fast process. So whoever the final blocker might be in getting content out, it's so important to get them in early so they understand how they, you've gone through this journey to create this piece of content that, when you're about to push it out, might be so different to what they thought their show was all about but when they realize it's come directly from their audience, they're more happy to go with it. Also, they sometimes offer up uh, things that you didn't know you had access to before. So before, we may not have had access to talent, but seeing as they are part of this, in this idea stage, they give us a talent, or they'll write a script for the content, um, which is really helpful. So we're going to have a little look at some examples um, of some of the content. So I've separated them out into four different types of content that we would push out, publish. So playback is one. So on the right is, uh, you can see this template is a case file. And every single week, it would flip over. And you would see what audiences are saying. So is Alice really Alice? And we would put in the content that our audiences were saying. And on the left, it was a spider diagram, a 360 photo. So as you're scrolling through that, you'll see there are some tweets in there. Um, of what people are saying. So the great thing about this is we're not giving away any spoilers. We're just playing back what people are saying, giving out the theories, and allowing people to debate about that in the comments section underneath. The other one is tapping into the zeitgeist. So um, great word for over here. Um, so on the left is one about Jodie being a brown noser. So this character, everyone was saying she's a brown noser. She's a suck up to Roz. There wasn't much love for her. And we didn't actually know that that was going to happen with her character. So we very, very quickly created a piece of content that just sort of showed all the times that she was a suck up, and we, we tap pushed that out. Now, what happened there is it tapped into a community that was already talking about that piece of content, so it did very well. And it also gave the BBC kudos for, be, for knowing that was a conversation and being part of it. And actually, that was our in our top five best posts of the whole campaign. And that's compared to trails that have huge amounts of resources put behind them. And that one, which maybe took someone 10 minutes to create, was up there in the top five. And it's because it was responsive. Similar on the right, 
um, is what we called gravy gate. So the family sat around eating a roast dinner and there's gravy on the table, but no one's put it on their plate and everyone freaked out about this. And we had so many tweets that we decided to create a piece of content about that and play that back. And the tone of voice, this is where I say about being authentic to, to who you are. Tone of voice for this one didn't feel right for BBC One, so we put it out on iPlayer and we try to use other channels where possible to push this out. The next one is answering questions. Um, so I'm just gonna whiz through this now actually. So the next one's answering questions and we got the, car the actors to answer the actual tweets that we got in from our audiences. And also sharing UGC. So you can see that when you value what audiences are saying, they actually give you really, really amazing UGC back. And these are actually genuine spider diagrams that some of our audiences did to work out who's done what and who's connected to who and then who might be the murderer, whatever it is. And actually that inspired the spider diagram you saw earlier on um, from the previous show. So then community management um, is so, so important. It's something that also wasn't being done very much. So once you've identified the topics, you can then turn each one of those posts that you've done to tap into that topic into a forum. And we could help facilitate debate and conversation and, and com uh, just, yeah, yeah, conversation in the comments section. And often those comments are sometimes more interesting than the content itself. So it's a really easy way for us to be able to get added value from our content. So, an organic Facebook post reaches 1% to 2% of your followers, and a tweet lasts 18 minutes. So if you don't do anything more than that, then what was the point of all of that energy and time on that piece of content? So you have to try and extend the lifespan of that content by nurturing it through nurturing these conversations, and then it will, it will uh, reach more people. Obviously, you can put spend behind it as well, but that's a different game. Uh, also, live community management. So this actually isn't... Uh, missing a line of duty this is another example where we actually got this choir on pitch battle to reply and they sung your tweet back to you so that's just kind of quite fun influencer identification so using brand watch as well I'm able to filter the conversations that are coming into the tool via the most influential people so I can see who's really influential already engaged talking about our show and I can prioritize community management to replying back to them or I can find ways to incorporate them into our content so on the right here, you'll see this is our character from the show. And at the top, you'll see a tweet from Zoella. Zoella had, at the time, 14 million Twitter uh, followers. And she was tweeting about the show. So we created this asset that just said, Merci beaucoup, Zoella, for watching Merci beaucoup, because he was a French detective. Um, and we held on to that until we knew she was probably going to tweet at the weekend. And we replied with that. Zoella then liked it, retweeted it, commented on it, and then the next day, quote, retweeted it and said that this has made her weak. So we turned one potential reach of 14 million into f that five times. <laughs> uh, so every time they engage, you're getting that reach. And also more than that, we had no access to that 14 million because they were all the youth audience that we were struggling to reach. So it's even more valuable when you realize that that was our only way of reaching them. And when you look at this graph, in um, red is the amount of engagement Zoella herself, completely free of charge or thrown back, generated for our campaign versus what the BBC generated for our campaign. And on week three, it's almost on par. I think it comes in at about 10% in the end. Uh, and then content analysis. Um, and then so this is my results at the end. So on the left, you'll see uh, the number of reactive assets. So in which way round is it? In blue, you've got the number of pieces of reactive assets that we published during this campaign. And in red, you have the number of pieces of broadcast assets that we published. And then on the right, you can see that the, the average engagement per post for reactive assets outweighs it. So the learnings from this is ultimately that less is more. And if you spend more time making sure every single post counts, you're going to get more out of that. And with Facebook's algorithms constantly punishing you for uh, overposting, this is the way to do it. You spend time nurturing every post and making sure it counts. So on that, the only other thing I was going to add is I very much focused here on marketing. But this process is also influencing our products. So uh, what, sh what are we going to commission? Who are we going to get into our shows um, on plastic? There might be a community doing something on plastic, and we can find out about them on social and bring them in and, and create a, a program around that. Um, so there's lots of other ways of using it. But um, I'll hand back over to Will now. Cool. So just to wrap up, ahead of schedule, which I think is important when you're uh, late in the order, on the running <laughs> order. 
So Brandwatch is a technology company. We have over 40 people based between Stuttgart and Berlin. Lots of great publishing clients. We'd love to work with you. If I or Jenny can answer any of your questions, please come and say hello. Thank you very much. Thanks. <laughs> And thank you very much, particularly for finishing ahead of time. What a great yeah. student. I thought thank we had you. more to say at the end. So <laughs> that means we do have minutes. time for a question or two. So if you'd like to, uh, to raise your hand, uh, feel free. Um, as always, I wouldn't mind starting with one. Um, was the idea of listening and then acting on what uh, people out there in social media land thought of programming, did that meet any internal resistance? Was there a sense that uh, should this, re you know, we know what we're doing. We're the experts mm. in programming. We know how to do this. Why are we listening to a bunch of sort of 17-year-old yeah. people with no life experience on Twitter, of all places? Yeah. Well, I mean, meeting resistance in the BBC is quite normal for anything <laughs> that you're trying to do. Um, but I would say that it, it even proves, actually, the, the number of pieces of broadcast content that went out versus the number of pieces of reactive content even proves that they were like, well, we'll give you a little bit of resource and you can test this out. So I think in any industry, when you're meeting resistance, the best thing is just to try and start and just take the smallest amount that you can, make a case study about it, and then you can start reeling it out. And I feel like my role at the BBC is constantly um, a, a role of, like, of trying to self-promote what I do and using case studies to convert people internally. Um, so yeah, I think once you've got that, backing from ex examples, then you, it's easier. So when it works, it's much harder to argue that you shouldn't do it. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Makes absolute sense. Any more questions from the floor? Yeah, one here. Do we have a microphone still in the room? <laughs> we do, and here it comes. Yeah, I was wondering if you listened on uh, more than your brand, so conversations that were going on that were not necessarily just to mm -hmm. your shows. Yeah, so... Um, well, what we listened to on these shows was conversations happening around the shows, but they don't necessarily have to be tagging the BBC. And attribution actually sometimes are quite a tricky thing, so they may not actually be talking to us, which is why it's important to do this. But, outside, but we were only interested in this about what was going on with that campaign. But we very much do listen to any other conversation that we are trying to... Uh, that is of interest to us. So with news, it might be that we are listening to wider conversations around certain topics to be able to create content off the back of that. So whatever topic it is that you want, we can build a query on Brownwatch and find that conversation. So it's, yeah, it sometimes has nothing to do with BBC's handle being in it at all. And another, another common thing that other organisations do is uh, identify the audience that they're interested in, so millennials or baby boomers, figure out who they are and then see the topics that they're talking about. So you can do it either from the topic to the audience or from the audience to the topic? Throughout okay. all of social media or can oh, you... Public, only the publicly uh, oh, published social media, yeah. Great. Okay, if, unless we have any more uh, last minute questions here, then I'll ask you please to thank uh, Jenny and Will. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs>